right, so this is my 1998 Ford Ranger. It's a twin turbo 5.3 with a 4L80 and it has a Jake's D3 trans brake in it. And as you saw from the previous clip, I have the bump working with the trans brake and it does bump pretty smooth. So I wanted to go over the smooth bump staging and how I set it up and kind of a little bit of theory around how the trans brake works to try to understand it a little bit better and why it may be challenging to get it to work right. I do have my laptop out and I'll go over uh, the tune and how I set that up, but first I want to talk a little bit about the theory behind it. So first thing to understand is that the Jake's D3 trans brake is not like a traditional trans brake. It doesn't work the same way as a typical trans brake would. A traditional style trans brake uses a large solenoid and it takes line pressure and then applies it to the reverse circuit and then when you turn the solenoid off, it exhausts all the fluid out of the reverse circuit. So they typically work very quickly. As soon as you hit the button, it applies because it's taking a large amount of fluid and applying it to the circuit immediately when you hit the button. And because of that, you get a quick apply, a quick release, and more consistency. So and I'll clarify right away that this does not apply to the Jake's D3 Pro model that they just came out with because that model does have the larger grinder style solenoid. I'm talking about the older model that has the, the little solenoid block on it with the two shift solenoids. So that little solenoid block that has the two shift solenoids on it, it goes on top of the valve body where the accumulators used to be. That little solenoid block is fed through the line pressure cavity through a set screw that has a hole in it. So it's a fixed orifice in the bottom of the block that's fed from line pressure and it's always feeding that circuit. When you activate that circuit, it closes the solenoids. So those solenoids at rest are exhausting fluid. So that small bit of line pressure fluid that's coming through the bottom of the block is always exhausting unless you have the solenoids applied. When you apply the solenoids, it closes that circuit, fills up the circuit, fills up reverse, and then applies the reverse. So with the Jake's D3, you can get a little bit of a slow apply. You hit the button and then there's a little bit of a delay and then it'll grab. Where a traditional style, when you hit the button, it slams fluid on the circuit right away and it comes on really quick. Now, when you release the button on the Jake's D3, it opens up both of those solenoids, exhausts the fluid out of that passage, releases reverse, and launches you in first gear. So I'm not an expert on this, but this is m my best understanding of why there's some inconsistencies with this brake. So that orifice, that solenoid block, is constantly being fed through that small orifice. It's a fixed size orifice, but the variable is your fluid temperature and other stuff like that. So if you have uh, differences in pressure or you have differences in temperature, you would have differences in the amount of fluid that's being flowed through that block all the time. When you have colder fluid, it's going to be thicker and not flow as much. When you have hotter fluid, it's going to be thinner and it may flow more. If you have a combination of thinner fluid, higher pressure, or for whatever reason your pressure is changing, it would change the amounts of fluid that's flowing to that block. The Jake's D3 is a fixed pressure unit, so it shouldn't be changing that much pressure, but you do have variations in temperature. So you also have a risk of like dirt, clutch material, other things accumulating inside the trans brake, inside the solenoid block, and that would also change the amount of fluid that those solenoids are exhausting. Shift solenoids, they have screens on them, so if you have like dirty lines or clutch material or stuff that starts to build up, it used to exhaust X amount of fluid and now it's exhausting less fluid. So if you run into a situation where your solenoids are starting to get plugged up and your temperature's hotter and you're flowing more fluid there, you could in theory change the amount of time that it takes to apply and release the brake or also release the brake and then reapply it for the bump to work. Where a traditional style solenoid, you, you're not going to run into that kind of stuff because it's, like I said before, a large amount of fluid being applied and then a large amount of fluid being exhausted and you don't run into that kind of risk. That's where I think you may have more success with the other style trans brakes, like picking something like 0.07 for a bump duration because you're adding in, you're building in a lot more consistency just because of the style of the solenoid. So with the Jake's D3, when I started playing with the bump, I talked to someone else that's local and my settings that were working on this, I was using 13 hertz and 33% for bump, a single pulse bump, and that worked with this truck. I could bump it and it would work. That person also has a Jake's D3. I did that transmission and that setting did not work on their transmission. They had to use like two to three times more delay to get it to bump. The transmission still worked, it still bumped, it just used different settings. So I think that might be where you see sometimes uh, people are saying that their bump doesn't work, or it's not consistent, or it only works once, or they're like trying different settings that other people were using and it doesn't work, and then they might think it's a, a trans brake problem when they just need to find whatever settings it is that work for their car. So I now switched from the single pulse bump 
to a duty cycle style bump where I can actually adjust the bump and it's more of a creep function. So instead of hitting the button once and it pulses once it bumps, I hold the button and the solenoid will cycle until I release the button. So that's the style that I'm using now and that's what I want to go over in this video. So I'll actually key the truck on and then I'll let you listen to the solenoid. So you'll hear a click. Hear that? And then I'll hold the bump. So you'll hear a click and then you'll hear the solenoid actuating. So hopefully you can hear that on the video, but that's what it does. When I hit the trans brake, it locks the trans brake on. When I hit the button, you heard that little That's the solenoid actuating and it slowly releases pressure off the reverse circuit to creep the truck forward. Okay, so this is gonna assume that you already know how to wire the trans brake, right? So you have a brake in ground, a bump in ground, and then you have a ground output that goes to solid state relay to control the solenoid. But this setup is going to have a fourth element to it, which is going to be another output, which is going to be called bump. So that's just how I'm doing it. So I have a bump in and a bump. The bump in is the ground input and the bump function is just telling the computer that I'm pressing the bump button so it creates a PWM output to switch the status. So I'll explain that and it'll make sense. So on the input side, I have a T brake in ground, which is pinned. And then I have bump in ground, which is also pinned. And then on the output side, I have trans brake out, which is a PWM out, which is pinned. And then bump on the output side, which is a PWM output, but it's not pinned anywhere. It says not defined. So this is what's going to tell the computer when I'm pressing the bump button. And that allows me to pull this PWM table into the axis for my trans brake out and that'll make sense in a minute. So to configure this bump button I'm using one input bump in enabled and what that does is it creates a PWM output which is just a hundred percent output and all I'm wanting this to do is basically change the status of my output table. So this is on fixed frequency doesn't matter, duty cycle doesn't matter, the axes don't matter all I want to do is this outputs 100% when I press the button. So then what I do with that is feed it into the trans brake out section. So this is also PWM output. And when I go into configure, I'm using one input trigger, trans brake in enabled, and speed below 10% because I don't want to accidentally be able to activate the trans brake while I'm moving. So then this creates a PWM output which goes to the trans brake. So what I'm using now in my current setup is fixed. I have 13 frequency and I actually set mine up on pulse width, which to be completely honest, I just didn't change it to duty cycle when I set it up. I thought it was on duty cycle, but it was still on pulse width. And these are the settings I ended up with. And this creeps very nicely. So, so that other bump output is what allows me to bring this PWM into this axis right here. And this is what allows me to switch it from the left side of the table to the right side of the table. So when I hit the trans brake in button, my bump position is at 0%. So it's giving me 100% duty cycle to the trans brake. When I press that bump button and the bump percent goes to 100%, then it brings it over to this side of the table over here. But all that bump percent is doing is switching it from zero when it's off to 100% when it's on, and it's switching from the left side of the table to the right side of the table. I also have this axis here set on front wheel speed, and it goes to 0% over 8 miles an hour. So again, it's another safety that I can't accidentally enable the trans brake while I'm moving. But you could also change this axis to be line temperature, you could change this to anything that you wanted really. You could change this to boost, so if you're making more boost you could adjust your bump percentage because when you're making more boost it's going to make more power so you might want to apply a little bit more to the brake. But that's essentially how this works.
So when I hit the trans brake button, I'm at 100% output. And then when I hit the bump button, it goes to 39 right here. And then that's what allows it to creep forward. I let go of the button and then it goes back over to this side of the table and applies the brake 100% again. So as I mentioned here, I initially set mine up on 13 hertz and uh, frequency. And then actually last night I realized that while I was making this video, so I'm re-recording this today. But I went out today and tested it just to see what I would need to set it up on to get the same response on duty cycle and it ended up looking like this. So it was on 14 hertz and then ended up being 48% would also give me a creep. So then the way that you find this is essentially just to go start around this like 13, 14, 15 hertz and then maybe start at 70 and then hit it and then see if it moves. If it doesn't move, then go down a little bit to 60. And then if it doesn't move, try it again. Go down a little more to 50. And then you'll get to a point where it's either not gonna move or it may move too far. So now if I went to 40 here, it would move way too far. <clears throat> so then now I know that I'm somewhere in between 40 and 50. So then you could go up 45. 45 might still be a little bit too far, so then it can go up and then you end up at where I was at, 48. So that's kind of basic concept of how you would, how you would adjust for that. So you're kind of just finding a balance of where it needs to be and then bracketing the numbers in between not moving at all and moving too far and then finding where, where it needs to be. But I would start on the higher end just so it's not way too aggressive and then like slamming, <laughs> slamming the band on and off. Because when I was first testing this and setting this up, uh, I ended up doing that exact same thing. I went from 15 hertz and then I tried 10 hertz with the same percentage in this table and it was way too aggressive. And I'd actually hurt my neck because I wasn't expecting it to move that much <laughs> and it hit really hard. It was like basically completely releasing the brake and then slamming it right back on. So I wasn't expecting that and I actually did have a sore neck for several hours after that. Um, so make small changes. I feel like the frequency number is a lot more sensitive than the duty cycle or the millisecond number where going from five to 10 here was really aggressive. And then changing it from, you know, 14 to 15, I'll change it to where it'll work or not. And one thing I did feel like I noticed after I tested this between duty cycle and milliseconds, when I was at 14 and 48 duty cycle, I felt like when it was creeping, it almost felt like it was chattering the transmission a little bit more. Where when I was at um, 13 and 39 on the millisecond setting, it was creeping and it didn't feel like it was chattering as much. Like I, I felt like on the duty cycle setting at that percentage, I felt like I could actually feel the band hitting and applying where this one seems like it's a little bit more smooth. But either way, both of them accomplish the same thing to be able to get it to move. So essentially, <clears throat> starting with a little bit higher numbers and then slowly working them down. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to go from a, a status when the band is completely applied to slowly releasing the band. Just enough to slip it, just enough to get it to move forward. So again, just to recap this, it's a four element setup. So on the input side, it has your trans brake in, ground, bump in, ground. Those both get pinned. You have a trans brake out, which gets pinned. A bump out, which does not get pinned because this is just changing your bump percentage on the table. This bump percentage is configured using the bump input to create 100% PWM output which gets pulled into this trans brake out PWM table. So when I'm hitting the trans brake in button below 10 miles per hour, it applies the trans brake 100% and then when I hit the bump button and change my bump percentage from 0 to 100, it moves from 100% applied 
over to 39 and then it releases the band just enough to slip it and creep the truck forward. So that's basically how it's set up.